So I think what I'm saying is that the quality industry is some kind of parallel universe. And before we establish parallel universes, we must ask some questions. Does quality in medical education reside in setting standards and inspecting against them? Can quality be guaranteed by quality agencies and regulators? And let me tell you, today is Saturday. Well, I know you know that. Of course you know that. And a week ago was also Saturday. Well, you know that. Today I'm standing here in front of you in Khartoum. Last Saturday morning, at the same time, I was marching through the streets of London. And I was marching through the streets of London with 12,000 doctors, most of whom were doctors in training, some of whom were their teachers. And I was marching through the streets. And those doctors were complaining, quite rightly, about their medical education about some aspects of their medical education. And the conversations that I heard around me were of doctors who were worrying, not about themselves at all, but actually about whether or not what was going on in medical education would produce good patient care and would produce the best doctors. There were 12,000 of them on the streets of London last Saturday, and me, and other mothers, and people like that. And at the same time, there is a huge development of the quality industry regulating medical education. It seems to me that there must be a lesson for us there. So can quality be guaranteed by quality agencies and regulators? Or do they fail to stop 12,000 doctors from marching on the streets of London? So what's the likely effect of removing ultimate responsibility for quality from the profession to external bodies? There is a great move for professions to be regulated from the outside, for somebody else to come and look at you, whether that's governments or whether it's other organisations. So what's the likely effect of that? And could a process of setting standards and inspecting against them become just a bureaucratic, a bureaucratic process? Will it just be numbers and statistics and surveys and people feeling very good about that? So we need to ask those questions before we establish a parallel universe. And it's all about, oh dear, it's all about my really bad typing. That's poor quality down on that bottom line. Who controls the quality agenda is the question that you must ask always. So, we've done a lot of research actually on um, the quality control of medical education. And we asked the people who were being inspected, being quality assured, what they valued about inspection. And it was very clear. They did not value the adoption of externally imposed standards. No, that wasn't it. They didn't really value the collection of data about what was going on. No, that wasn't it either. They didn't particularly value the receipt of reports from the inspectorate. No, wasn't particularly that either. I mean, they did all that. They received it all. Very interesting. No, that wasn't really what they valued. What they did value, however, Importantly, was the opportunity to make local developments because the inspectors were coming. And they used it to say, so now we must do this. But what they did was change what they were doing in the ways in which they wanted to. They used external quality control, quality assurance, as a lever for change. And that's wonderful because it kept the initiative with them. And that was mar <coughs> marvellous. <clears throat> so the ownership of quality actually stays local and stays 